Hi guys, Troopsquire here, and today I'm going to have a look at the 14 inch gigabyte P34K V7 laptop. This model has the latest KB Lake i7 7700HQ processor, 16GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2400MHz, a 1440p, so 2560x1440 60Hz IPS screen. It also has the new Pascal line GTX 1050Ti, a 256GB M.2 SSD and a 1TB 7200rpm secondary drive with a 61.25 watt hour battery. All of this hardware is stuffed into a full metal chassis which feels very sturdy and has practically no flex on the surface and very little on the display. Given all the hardware inside, it's impressive that Gigabyte have kept the weight of the machine to a very light 1.7 kilograms. Under the hood you have a backlit chiclet type keyboard with two 1.5 watt speakers and a HD webcam. For ports, on the left you have a Kensington lock, LAN port, VGA, USB 3.0, USB 3.1 Type-C and the headphone jack. On the right you have the power port, HDMI 1.4, USB 3.0, an SD card reader and another USB 3 port. As far as aesthetics go, this looks to be tailored towards those that want a mid-range gaming laptop, but one that you can also take to meetings with you and not raise the eyebrows of everyone in the room. The keyboard feels good to type on and has decent travel. It also has a full-size enter key, which I know is a small point, but it's quite a rarity these days. The trackpad has a slightly matted feel, and although not the best out there, it's serviceable and pretty accurate. The screen is a big step up from the HP Omen I reviewed previously, both in terms of colours and black levels. The higher resolution makes everything look incredibly sharp, especially in terms of games. However, bear in mind the 1050 Ti is not capable of running newer and more demanding titles, such as Rise of the Tomb Raider and Dishonored 2, at this native resolution on high settings. The monitor is also decently bright, and I very rarely found myself in a situation where I needed to have it set to 100%, even in a very brightly lit office. On the screen I had, there was quite noticeable backlight bleed. Now this is par for the course with the IPS screens, however I find it far more noticeable than on other laptops like the GL502 and the Dell XPS 15. In terms of software, I was a bit taken aback when I first turned on the P34K as there were a substantial amount of icons on the desktop. Although there is a fair amount of bloatware here, some of the apps like the Smart Manager which allows you control to control a number of different settings like fan speed, brightness, battery settings and so on, is a fairly useful and well put together tool. However, if I were to purchase this for myself, I would likely do a clean install of Windows and just install the essentials, although I generally recommend doing this with most gaming laptops. With regards to cooling and fan noise, this is very much a mixed bag. When I was running the system on battery power with the fan profile on medium and the power mode on balanced, it was impressively quiet. The bottom was cool enough to have on my lap when browsing, and under low load, the surface temperatures remained cool, with the CPU sitting at around 60 degrees. When the battery died out and I had to plug the machine in, it was a completely different kettle of fish. The system fans immediately ramped up and became distractingly noisy. Even just browsing the web with a couple of tabs open, the CPU temperature would jump up to 80 plus degrees and the fans would constantly ramp up and down. This is an example of how loud the fans can get with just steam open and nothing else. The heat also increases quite noticeably towards the bottom rear and also on the right where you rest your palm when typing. It's not as bad as the Omen in this respect but it's still quite noticeable. There is however an option to set the laptop to a quiet profile however this does lower the CPU clock speed by 1 GHz. If you're just doing day to day browsing using basic office applications then this is fine however if you do need to do some productivity work on it then you'll likely want the extra power and will have to suffer with the noise. As expected, the fan noise when playing games can also get quite loud. Mercifully though, the speakers are punchy enough to drown out most of the fan noise, even during quieter moments in games. Unfortunately, the battery life is very disappointing. In the office, with the keyboard backlight switched off and the brightness on 75%, I got just over two hours from using it for work and having two windows open on Firefox, which is very disappointing, especially given that this uses an NVIDIA Optimus, which means that when doing day-to-day -day tasks, the system uses the onboard GPU instead of the dedicated graphics card. 
watching a video under the same settings, I got about three and a half hours, which is fine for short flights or on train journeys, but still quite underwhelming. As with the 2GB 1050, Sniper Elite 3 on Mac settings runs very well on the 1050Ti, averaging at about 90 to 100 FPS at 1920x1080. The 1050Ti can even run the game on the laptop's native 1440p, and generally sits at around 50 to 60, with a few drops below here and there. For Resident Evil 7, again, much like the 1050, the 1050Ti can't run the game on max settings. If you ramp everything up as high as it will go, it will sit at around 15 frames per second. If, however, you turn shadow quality down to high, the game will be a very playable 50 to 60 FPS, with some dips below. If you turn down one or two more settings, you'll easily maintain a solid 60 FPS. Unfortunately, Rise of the Tomb Raider, much like games such as Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Witcher 3, just don't run well on lower end cards, even if you turn down the settings to lower presets. Rise of the Tomb Raider on very high will run at about 30 to 40 frames per second in the more demanding areas like the Soviet base, but will also drop into the high 20s. If you turn the settings down to the high preset, you'll get about 40 to 50, which is perfectly playable with a controller, but might be a bit laggy if you're on a mouse and keyboard. So, in conclusion, the 1050Ti is more than capable of running older and well-optimised games at 1080p, some even as high as 1440p, however if you want to max out all the latest games, you'll need to look at something like the GTX 1060. There is definitely a lot to like about the Gigabyte P34K. It looks the part if you're going to use it for office work, but it's also quite slick as a gaming machine. Speakers are decently loud and can easily be heard over the fans when gaming. The keyboard and trackpad are decent, and there is a great selection of ports. The screen looks really sharp thanks to the 2560 by 1440 resolution with good vibrant colours and good brightness. The specs allow you to play most games at high settings at 1080p, with some older or better optimised games able to run at native 1440p. Unfortunately, there are a couple of things holding it back from being a must buy. Firstly, the temperatures on the underneath and bottom right of the surface are uncomfortably warm even under light load. The fans can get very loud on the normal profile if you're just doing day to day tasks, and the battery life is poor even with Nvidia Optimus. Lastly, there is a fair amount of bloatware included. If you're able to overlook those flaws, then the Gigabyte P34K is a great choice for someone looking to get a gaming laptop that is also suitable for taking to the office. And that's it for me. If you like this review, please let me know with a like if you enjoyed it or a dislike if you thought it was crap. I'm obviously a very small channel and still trying to find my feet in terms of what type of content it will have, but one of the key things I'd like to do is review laptops that haven't yet been reviewed by some of the bigger channels and sites like Notebook Check and Mobile Tech Review. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing, please let me know with a subscribe. Thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.